Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start with a couple of announcements. The most important announcement right now um, is the open discord. So if you want to be a part of the community challenges coming up, you want to be more connected to your community. So you remember one of the most important things about improving art is to be part of an art community. Uh, this means that they help you, encourage you, they critique you, they guide you, seeing how other artists' journeys unfold helps you, you know, with yours and decisions you want to make about style and art and study and subjects. Motivation and discipline can all be improved if you're part of a community. So being a part of a community is step one. So to be part of a community, there's two things you can do. Uh, but uh, the first one you probably already know about, which is jo to join my subreddit, where people submit their art and I pick pieces the subreddit is kind of slow today um and i critique them and the second thing is discord so if you go to istabrak.com and click on the community tab right here join the official discord server um here you'll be able to uh be part of the community of course critique each other meet amazingly talented artists the amount of talent in that group is just unreal um and uh be a part of the community challenges submit your work and get notifications. Uh, so if you're having issues joining live streams um, and uh, just generally getting notifications for anything I upload, any changes in the community, anything like that. If you find yourself you're late to a lot of stuff, especially community challenges, uh, which do come with rewards sometimes, uh, join the Discord. It is just direct and um, no one's had any issues with it so far. Uh, so please make sure you're taking the time to stop this video. Go to isterback.com, go to the community jet tab, join the Discord community, join the subreddit. So what are the rules of environment? So I'll give you the rules, just like last time. I gave you the rules of what light does. Light glows, light lands, light bounces, and um, light is bright. So for this, I'll give you the basic list of rules. I love lists, you love lists, you should love lists because they make life easy. We don't actually have to memorize every possible thing or instinctively feel our way around what to do with a portrait. Sometimes we could write a list of what we need to do with in a painting and, um, and that's it. That's all we have to do. So write down your lists, make some lists. The first step is to use a horizontal canvas. For using a horizontal canvas opens the scene. Why? Because our eyes are beside each other. They're not on top of each other. We don't have to look up and down to see an environment. We look side to side to see a landscape or a panorama. Um, so our head pans from side to side. That's why it's called a panorama. So that's the first thing you did wrong, is that you used the tile canvas. And I want to pull from that same extreme bright. So I'm using normal, and I'm just throwing down these brush strokes to give the background some sense of light. So step two is brighten as needed, especially for an outdoor environment. You won't be able to pull off what you think is an illustrate a light, uh, an environment, sorry, without that, that, that mowing is driving me crazy. So I'm just going to do that here. And we see a lot of dodge tool. So dodge tool pretty much carried what happened in the background there, or some kind of dodge layer, layer mode. And it's just it's just a matter of laying down these values, and dodge tool does the rest. But we can mimic it by hand. We're gonna darken the foreground. We're just literally gonna drop the foreground a lot, because in order for us to get that sunset feeling, we have to show how the light has been eclipsed. So I'm just gonna put some really really simple foreground object here and I'm going to separate it with a layer and it's going to be the darkest point. Continue just throwing in some random brush strokes just so something can pop out at me. Locking that layer. All right so that orange is a kind of a pinkish orange which is leaning closer to red. And these are very basic mountains. I mean, that's just one, two, three, four steps. You can add much more. You can add flatter mountains. You could really mess with their shapes. Honestly, when it comes to organic patterns, the more you mess around, the better. And don't be too worried about making things all messed up. It's really just about making it feel random, as random as it occurs in nature. 
and don't worry too much about texture don't worry too much about uh, foliage right now the most important thing right now is establishing the environment but I don't feel like rendering clouds today so I'm just gonna borrow my cloud brush and see what I can pull off and then the majority of this environment obviously is the detail of the architecture the rider and the sky but I don't have time to pull all that off so I'm just going to mess around with this with the clouds to see if I can raise the detail level up a little bit when it comes to the clouds at least okay so that's a good enough color so I'm just gonna throw my brush pretty much everywhere sometimes when you're at a loss give yourself something to fix not so much trying to build every single step in the right direction so that means that sometimes all you need is a couple of bad brush strokes to get the ball rolling and um, and then you move from there so I just threw in some random and clouds are different there are nearby clouds there are far away clouds there are clouds that are closer to the horizon there are clouds that barely have any of those billowy shapes there are clouds that are flatter along the horizon so I'm using shift to move the brush along and there are clouds that are um, uh, 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 more billowy and shapeless and closer to the to the camera um, and they don't actually have that flat value and then all of this is really um, just so that we can have some kind of detail once that um, sun is eclipsed over there in the background so I always like to just really burst out that that uh, soft um, this the dodge tool on soft brush and just um, kind of just try to get that eclipse going another thing that happens is what happens to the sky once it reaches the bright part of the sky once it touches the this is what happens when we merge all the layers once it touches the ground layer so there is a lot of bloom a lot of hue changes um, and so I'm just using that purple and there's a slight little purple that we borrow from the sky and use it on the ground just here all right duplicate layer filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm erasing so there's zero blur in the foreground and that's where we get that focal point you can blur the background as much as you want as long as you have the foreground object have the an object in the foreground so let's um let's add uh, uh, I don't know what to add you want to shrink the character because it advances the size of the of the canvas it just makes things it upscales it because it makes it feel like we are actually in a very very realistic plane but you weren't studying the right things you weren't studying it the right way which is what's the science what's the physics of what I'm looking at what's in front of what what's the furthest what's the closest all that stuff the human brain doesn't act process without data the human brain can't give itself data and then critique the data all in the vacuum of the mind are you guys following me that's all super abstract let me repeat that the human mind doesn't do everything in its in the vacuum of the mind it needs something to process in front of it so if you're painting and you're like i have to already know what brushstroke i'm going to put down in order to complete this painting you can't physically do that as a human you have to have something to fix in front of you that will guide what you're doing in order to do it um, this is especially important with art especially important with studying textures on illustrations because you just have to lay down some shitty brush strokes um, and just let them do their thing so you get gray white and you're just gonna slap that on everything but you just gotta use the right brush and that is really gonna bring in a whole new dimension of value so this is just gray it's not blue gray or anything it's just it's more, more gray than anything compared to all this it looks pretty gray and if you use that in the foreground it's just gonna add that little atmospheric detail and sometimes these um ominous uh fog of of you know war or whatever it brings some kind of ominousness to it um, it can catch some of the light so if you're careful you could probably catch some of the light in there 
Remember, your eraser brush should also be the same as your paintbrush when working with textures like clouds or rocky surfaces or, or, um, or fog or anything like that. Don't try to use a blocking brush to erase the cloud brush you just used to create this atmosphere because the negative space of the texture is equivalent to the positive space of the, of the texture. It, it, it depletes and rises in the same pattern. So you should use the same brush stroke. But this gray white is it's just everything because it, it adds that little dimension of detail. I would love to add some foliage just like he did, just slight little grass textures, grass patches here and there, but I don't have time. I think many people wonder how to study, how to study deliberately, and this kind of thing is a great example of a deconstructive study where you analyze fundamentals. Yeah, when you get rid of all the detail of this painting, all you have left is just the building blocks, and you can do that by going to pixelate mosaic. All you have are basic, the basic building blocks of everything, which is the bright background, even after him darkening it. So this is way later in the evening than what I did. Um, uh, the background is still a little bit brighter. You have the gradient from light to dark at the top. You can see the purple dominant here, and then the baby blue, and then that little bit of gray, and um, more purple dominating that center area because the sky distorts and it's like a big soft brush came in with purple and uh, and just uh, washed over everything along in the middle. Even doing that actually really enhances the painting because it adds that little bit of that sunset, that sunset hue. And you don't really miss a lot because the background is supposed to be bright and the foreground is supposed to be dark. So use that mosaic filter to help you diminish the detail a little bit so it's not distracting you. And then obviously move on from there. What is the closest object? What's the, what's the palette of the closest object? Swatch that. What's the palette of the most distant object? Swatch that. If you uh, want to know, so you're watching a recording on YouTube right now. If you want to know how to make it to my classes, just go to istabrak.com. I critiqued a piece somebody posted today on, on the Reddit. So istabrak.com. Click the Reddit icon right here. It'll take you straight to my subreddit. If you want to join my Discord, please go to my community tab on my website, istabrak.com slash community. Join the official Discord. And if from Discord, everything, you can access it. Uh, but I only pick pieces from the red, subreddit to critique. But it's really cool seeing how everybody critiques each other's 14-day challenge. There's a 14-day challenge text channel. There's a community challenge text channel. Um, uh, there's just so much, so much. There's an anime critique text channel. I post, if you guys want to see my old anime drawing from when I was 12, you can if you go to my Discord community. Um, there, there, you gotta see them. <laughs> The most cringy Yu-Gi-Oh drawings you've ever seen, but you get, you just gotta come see them. It's part of the fun. All right, I'll let you guys go. Thank you everyone uh, for coming. This helped a ton. Beautiful class, great job. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Please make sure you bookmark it. Uh, keep the tab open. I'll randomly just a ghost Istabrak voice will randomly start talking that day at 5 p.m. Eastern. But keep the tab open. Um, uh, and obviously, make sure that you keep your notification bell on and all of that. Um, if you don't plan on joining on Discord, but YouTube, I don't think is ever going to change the way it's working with my channel, my video, the majority of my videos are too long. So it's, it's, it doesn't bother with my channel anymore, essentially. Um, so, um, make sure you join the Discord so you can get access to all of the notifications and all that. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye guys.